Today we're going to make this pretty green leaf bowl. I'm going to make one pretty similar to it, a little different shape. But I'll show you how I throw this on the wheel and then cut it. Okay, I start out with a piece of ball clay. I am throwing the clay onto the wheel and that centrifugal force that I throw down is needed for the pot throwing. I'm turning it and do you see how the clay is wiggling right now? That's unacceptable because that means that's not centered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet my hands and then center the piece of clay. Water is really important because that's the lubricant that's needed. So what I do is I take my hands, rest my elbows on my knees and press in until that clay stops wiggling. I just apply a lot of inward force. Now you see how that looks like that's standing still even when it's moving fast? That means that clay is centered. Now I can put my hands in there. I get all this heavy clay body off my hands because if I have too much clay in my hands it's going to want to stick to it. Now what I do is I take my thumbs, press them straight down in the center till I get about that far from the bottom and then I will drive my thumbs out to the side and pull up. So I'm driving it right in the center. Now I'm sliding my thumbs over on the base to the outside of my hands, leaving about a half inch space, and then I'm pulling straight up from there. Rimming the top. Taking this neat little tool, smooth on the bottom, flattens out the base real nice and flat. I'm not putting much of a rim on the top of this one because a lot of this is going to be cut off with the leaf pattern. Now I'll take this tool, trim it a little bit on the bottom. Remove the excess clay. Smooth that up with my wetted fingertips so that it's nice and soft on the top. Then I'm applying a little more pressure here. And that's nice and smooth, and when I do a drying surface, that's what I want to do on there. Okay, now what I want to do is remove this. So what I'm going to do is take my wire tool, stretch it out real tight, put a little water there. I grab my water and I pull it underneath there, and I do that twice. I dry my hands before I pick this piece of pottery up. That helps it to grip the pot a little better, so otherwise it'll slide right off. Okay, pull it up. I can pick it up like this and set it right over here. Now normally what I do is I trim the bottom of this pot. I've already pre-trimmed a little piece of pottery that's similar to this one. So um, we're going to go over to the table I'm, I'll show you how I do the artwork on there. Okay, okay. this is the piece of pottery I'm going to be working on. Um, I have to do this in stages because in order for that piece of pottery to have worked it had to have dried somewhat. You can see this is kind of at a leather hard stage. It's a lot firmer. I can pick it up. Um, but it still is not dry yet and that's just the stage you want to work on for this. Now if you can zoom in here I'll show you what I've been doing on this piece of pottery. What I've done here to get this leaf pattern is I have actually just taken a pencil, just rounded tip so there's no sharpness to it, and I've actually just sketched, if you can see, the little grooves, just little guidelines. And those will all be gone when we're all done. But basically I'm just sketching a leaf design on there so I know where to cut it. Okay. Kind of see that there? Now what I'll do is I'll take this tool, 
It's an X-Acto knife tool. And when I'm making these cuts, it's real important to hold it at a right angle like this. I don't want to pivot it side to side. So what I'm doing is I'm just pulling that in. This still um, maneuvers pretty well at this leather hard stage. You don't want it any drier than this or this wouldn't work. Yeah, I'm going to do a little Speedy Gonzalez cutting version here so we can get this done. It's real important when you end your cut to not go over it. That's the bottom of the leaf there. Okay, now what I've done here is I've cut the basic design out for the leaves, but this is, has a lot of work to do on it yet. What I'm going to do first, if, if I were to just fire this right now, that would be very sharp edges because it dries just like it is. So what I'm going to do next is take a little water on the tip of my finger and round out all of these little edges here because clay will dry and if it has any sharp edges it will be sharp when you're done. And that's one nice thing about pottery is you want it to be tactily pleasing too. You want When you pick it up you don't want to cut yourself. <laughs> now that I have those edges taken off, um, this is almost complete but not quite. I take this tool, it's called a stylus tool, and it has a little metal V groove in it. And it's real nice because I can do a lot of drawing right on the vessel with this. So I'm going to set that up on my knee here so you can see. Just pulls out a little segment right like that. Okay, I'm just going to do a couple of these so you can see the outside edging. And then I'm going to draw the little leaf pattern in here, too. And then I'm going to draw some of these veins in the leaf. Start from the center and just flare out. You get the idea of what we're doing here? I'll continue to do this all the way around. When I'm all done decorating this pot, I'm going to let it completely dry. And then I low fire it at 1800 degrees. I put glaze on it, which I think I'm going to put green glaze on it just like this one because I like the leaf and the green together. And then I'm going to high fire it and it'll have a similar look to this but a little different. Thanks. Mary Lobbs lives and works as an artist in the north woods of Minnesota. Inspired by nature, all her pottery is wheel-thrown and hand-carved. See these and others at Dunton Locks Pottery.